Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Defining Your Life podcast, where we focus on living in our purpose, practicing presence, and activating our power in each moment. I'm Marsha Rell, your resident pep talk provider, and I invite you to join me as we continue to learn, lift each other up, and strive to level up together. Because we are never finished defining our lives, and it takes a village, so let's build one. Stay tuned for the episode. Hey everyone, I hope that you have been having a great week so far and that you're feeling good, you're feeling motivated, and in general, all is well. Is it me or is this year flying by already? I mean, it's already mid-February and here outside of Philly, we've had a bit of a spring preview weather-wise, then we went straight into a snowstorm and just like the weather... My calendar is looking crazy. So I feel like I've already covered a lot of ground this year and have a ton more to go, but it's only been like six weeks. (laughs) Now, in the midst of all this chaos, though, sometimes it's really difficult to keep it together. And with so many things coming at us at the same time, even with the ability to power through them, you have to ask yourself, is this the right course of action? Should we be powering through no matter what? Now, don't get me wrong. There are many instances in which we do need to power through. Run a sprint, if you will, knowing that, yes, we do have to keep going, moving and shaking until we get over the hump. But when powering through becomes the norm, Houston, we have a problem. The power through is a sprint. And what you should be able to see during a sprint is the light at the end because it's short, right? You know that for a specific period of time, you got to go harder, but your saving grace is that definitive end date. It's that mile marker you hit when you know you can finally slow down. But what do you do when your sprint becomes a marathon? How do you keep going when there is no end in sight, no signs of relief or escape? You look up and what you see in front of you is not sustainable, but you don't see a way out. Do you lean into defeat and keep fooling yourself into believing that you are able to power through? That is until your body involuntarily powers down. (laughs) Or do you armor up to protect your mind, your body and your peace? The last four months, I've found myself in a constant elevated state, and unfortunately, not in a good way. I know that I have talked a bit about how work has been pretty crazy, but in the spirit of transparency, it's only right to share with you all how I've really been feeling. And the truth is, I've been experiencing some symptoms of burnout. At this point, there's really no sugarcoating it. (laughs) Your girl is wiped out, and I've been struggling. Now, I can state this truth and not claim it for my life. Not claiming something can often sit in the same category as denial. You know, you hear people say all the time, I'm not claiming that for my life, that this ain't going to have power over me, et cetera, et cetera. But what are you doing to combat it? You can't rebuke something and not turn away from the behavior that brought it into your life in the first place. So we're not going to go down the road of denial, but rather acceptance and positive action to stop the burnout train in its tracks before it derails. What I've come to realize over the last couple of weeks is that you may find yourself coming out of a very stressful or taxing period. And you might be like, yes, I made it through just in the nick of time. I avoided the burnout. But in reality, the train may have already left the station. And here's why I say this. Fourth quarter of 2023 may have been one of the busiest, if not the busiest periods ever of my work life, but work coupled with home obligations during the holidays made for a season of putting my head down and powering through because things needed to get done, right? But let me tell you, it was crazy town. And for lots of people, this may be their norm. But my over 40 self has nothing to prove. And I'm sure you can tell from the subject matter on this pod here that that's not how I like to get down. And so I was fortunate to be able to take some time off during the holidays to rest a bit. But what I discovered is that when you're fully depleted, a little bit of rest does not go a long way. 
So I came into the new year feeling like I'd be able to manage. My workload was and still is heavy, though not as heavy as the last two months of the year. And you may be thinking that a slightly reduced workload coupled with time off should have done the trick, right? Wrong. Because I was so spent, my battery never fully powered up again, even after having that time off. So as the first few weeks of 2024 ticked away, I recognized that I'm still off. (laughs) And ultimately, the only person that can change this for me is me. So now that I've given you my rant, let's look together at some signs of burnout so that you can check in with yourself. And also, you know, I'm going to share some tools to aid in solutioning around avoidance and hopefully reversal of some burnout symptoms because a problem without a solution remains a problem and we don't have time for that. So burnout symptoms. Now keep in mind that there are lots of symptoms, right? And I just want to share some symptoms to look out for before burnout elevates to severe and you may possibly need the intervention of others. And of course, I'm no doctor, but I encourage you to get in tune with yourself so that you can recognize when something is wrong and then take the appropriate actions. But here are a few common work-related burnout symptoms. According to a New York Times article, which I will share that in the show notes for y'all. So insomnia, right? Physical exhaustion, changes in eating habits, headaches, stomach aches. Other things to look out for include cynicism towards your work and mental distancing. And again, I'm talking about work burnout here, but extreme stress could also be the topping on this pizza. Now, these are all the things that we can get a hold of, right? If we just like hunker down and do what we need to do. But did you know that according to the American Psychological Association, and this is some research that they pulled in from another source, employees who experience true work burnout have an 84% increased risk of type 2 diabetes. Did y'all hear that? 84%. Stress and burnout are nothing to play with, y'all. And we have to take accountability for caring for ourselves and not letting things like intense stress and burnout take over. Our health trumps everything. When that job decides that they need to move in a different direction or that they need someone that may work faster for cheaper, will they take into consideration that you put your head down, powered through and risk your health for one more report, one more meeting, one more strategic plan? I need not tell you the answer because you already know. But if you find yourself in a scenario where you're knocking on burnout's door, experiencing serious symptoms, I implore you to take action because you don't want to encounter something that will be hard, if not impossible, to bounce back from. And that's real. So what can we do? We need our jobs, we need to function, and we need to feel good both at work and outside of work because that negative energy that you're experiencing at work will surely bleed into your personal life. Ask me how I know. So here are a few tools, some that may require you to put on your big girl panties. (laughs) Number one, speak up. If you're overwhelmed, if the work is legitimately too much, speak to your superior about it. If you're on a team with others that are also feeling the impact, partner up. There's power in numbers, but present the problems as well as suggested solutions. This ensures that no one is ever surprised and that you have the expectation that change needs to happen in the same way they expect you to keep on performing. Next, set some boundaries. If someone's trying to put more work on your plate, let them know that something will need to be deprioritized and ask them what they would like it to be. And if you need to deprioritize some things at home as well, then do what you need to do. But remember that home is your retreat, a place to seek relief and comfort. So don't create chaos where you seek your peace if you can avoid it. And then prioritize rest whenever you can. That actually may require getting over a bit of FOMO for missing out on events outside of work, of course. But the last time I checked, thankfully, we aren't running around here cloned. So if you need to graciously bow out of an event so that you can veg out, then do that. You may feel like you're missing something at first, but your body will thank you. 
And y'all have heard me talk about calendar blocking before. Do it, okay? It has really been a saving grace for me. Now, there's tons of other things that we can do, but these are some basics that should give you some immediate relief. And while it's always nice to go get your nails done, your hair done, get a massage, all that jazz, you have to implement some core things that are going to help you with your day to day where the stress is being created. But let me just say, if you're listening to this and the burnout beast has infiltrated fully in your life, get the help that you need. Whether that's seeing a physician or a therapist, again, do what you need to do because it's not a game. I'll leave you with a quote from whom I'll say is anonymous because tracking the original source proved challenging. But if you know the originator, then let me know so that I may credit them. Burn bright, not out. Thanks so much for listening today. If what you've been hearing has been beneficial, don't forget to share, review, rate, and follow the pod. And if you need support on your journey to avoid burnout, don't hesitate to reach out to me, which you can do via email or IG. I can't wait to chat with you all again next week. Take care until then.